I've changed the name to, from Brick Lane to Broccoli Lane and um, I make the plaster of Paris moulds and put them all over London and Brick Lane. When the tourists are in London, um, I sell between 150 to 200 of framed broccolis. And every week I put more broccolis out because people used to come along and take the broccolis off the wall and send me messages saying, we've got one of your broccolis, all excitedly. Here's your cards as well. Brilliant. Thank you. Cheers. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, in this one, three and a half years. In the other one, I crossed the road, eight years. Yeah. I first started 16 years ago. And this print is one of the favourite prints. There's only 200 of these. Yes. Checking it was signed, and it is. All right, that's Thank that one. And that's 61 on its own. Thank you very much. Being a, an artist, I mean, I think most people realise at some stage in their life that art is something that they're going to be doing um, because um, I've always seen in pictures, I've always, I've, I've, where I say I've never been very, really academic, um, and I've always been a dreamer, really. You've got to produce something different that no one has really seen, and you've got to create a kind of your own style, and I think that can be frustrating because you're sort of, um, you're trying to find your way, really. And I, I didn't go to university um, to study art. Um, I think it just came naturally uh, to me in the fact that I think once I found um, the energy uh, that I connected to, which is like a universal energy, and I understood the flow of the energy, then um, my creative um, my creativity became a um, natural process for me. As you can see, it's full of the stuff from the house because we're moving out of the house. My first collage was done 16 years ago and I photographed lots of broccoli um, and then I cut them out and um, I painted the background first and then I, I layered it with really old fashioned newspaper from a hundred years ago. So this newspaper behind is like a backdrop. Um, then I painted in the big silver moon and with all my cuttings that I've amassed over quite a few years, I started to collage this one here. I very rarely work on one picture, but I worked on this one, the first one I worked on all by itself, and um, it became the Broccoli Jungle. And it's, it's a little bit, um, I've been influenced by Monty Python, Salvador Dali, and Hieronymus Bosch. Um, Monty Python was really humorous, so I've added um, two monkeys on the rock getting drunk and a giraffe going into a telephone box. And um, if you look more, you'll see more little things poking out, like the dinosaur. Um, and it, it just became a really fun picture to do. And um, I think there must be about maybe 500 to 1,000 prints of this around the world. It's one of my fastest selling prints now, the Broccoli Jungle. My childhood was um, very bad. 
I had nothing in my life worth living for. Um, it started with my parents uh, leaving me at the age of four. So I had no parents to tell me what anything meant, what love was, what um, holding was. Um, I never had that taught to me by my parents. And I th think that was a very important thing for parents to do, to be able to lo be loved by your mother and father um, is, is so important because they give you the uh, they teach you how to be in life as a baby, as a child, as anything. Um, because I didn't have that, um, my life uh, became very disturbed and um, unhappy. My father uh, went to America when I was about four years old and he never came back. Uh, my mother um, went into um, hospital because she couldn't deal with um, the separation. So my grandmother looked after me until the age of when I was about nine. Um, but I didn't, I wasn't very good at school. I was always getting into fights when I was sort of six, seven and eight um, because I was very unsettled and um, then I end, ended up going to boarding school uh, where I was there for about uh, five or six years and that was a very violent place. Um, so uh, my, the whole of my education was um, one of um, total disruption. I couldn't concentrate on things. And um, so I didn't really, academically, I didn't achieve much. Um, sadly, I would have liked to have had a better education than I did. But, you know, I suppose uh, I survived which is, um, you know, I felt suicidal many a times in my childhood. And uh, once I took a lot of tablets when I was about 12, I took a lot of tablets uh, hoping to die. And fortunately I didn't. Um, and then I suffered a lot of depression in my time. Um, so it wasn't very easy, no. This is how I do my artwork. I work in the subconscious. So um, I work in like a dreamlike state. And um, when I'm working in the dreamlike state, I can be there for hours and hours and hours. And it's like a meditation. And um, when I'm creating, I'm creating deep in the meditational energy field, which which means I can sort of let go of, of everything in the conscious mind. Even pain seems to go away when I'm in the subconscious mind and when I'm, when I'm creating artwork, uh, all my pain seems to go away. And um, I could be in that state for hours and hours just creating artwork. And um, when I'm there, it's like, 
I'm not actually doing the artwork. It's almost like the energy of the universe is doing it and I'm just used as a vessel to create the work. And um, I can be there for hours and hours and hours. And uh, when I come out of that zone, back into the conscious mind, and I look at my own work and I think, Christ, who did this? Because you don't see where I work on up to 20 pictures at the same time, um, you don't see the big picture of any of them. So it just happens um, automatically. So cre it's automatic creativity which I go through. And um, this is uh, what all my artwork is about. I mean, when I'm creating the work, I go to a place where I was carefree. And when I'm working, it's like I'm, I'm a seven-year-old kid again in a swinging park, carefree days of just going from a slide to a swing, then a roundabout, enjoying the summer sun with nothing to worry about. And um, that's, that's where I am. And then I come out of that zone, I had to come back to reality. At the age of 18, I was confined in a mental institution. Uh, I was eventually let out at the age of 21. Um, and the horrors of the mental institution uh, was quite evil. There's a lot of nasty things that happened. Uh, patients used to slit their wrists in front of me and blood just went everywhere. Nurses used to beat patients and all things like this. Um, but yeah, there's been, <laughs> there's been challenges in life which um, have been hard, all of which could have ended my life at any time. Um, but I managed to survive. Uh, my work has resonated with so many people around the world. It makes me proud of myself that I've actually become the person that has inspired and uh, who's inspired other people to either create more or just enjoy my work and and have the benefit of me being alive today. So you don't feel lonely? I don't feel lonely, no. No. Um, I feel very much alive and more alive than I've ever felt before.